Amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time. You may be seated. Sometimes we need reminders of all that God does in our lives, and that's another reminder that he's a chain breaker. I thank God for all of you, and welcome to the Crossroads. Thank you all for those that are visiting. My name is Pastor Marcel, and we just thank God for you. Crossroads is a place where you can replenish, you can release, and you can do so much with the things of God because we want you to release those things that you don't need. We want you to replace your faith in God, and we want you to renew your strength in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So today, what I want to do is I want to talk about this week real quick before we get into the word. So this week has been a week of remembrance, believe it or not. So much has taken place this week. We just finished up with port, and for those of you that don't know what port is, port is where we remember those that are less fortunate and we provide for them. It becomes a bad thing when the church itself forgets about the community. We're here for the community, not just for ourselves, so we remember them. We have people here that were being fed, people that were being housed for the evening, they were provided stuff, resources, connections, linked up with other agencies in order to be able to help them out of their situation. So we thank God for that. So that was a remembrance there. We also had elections this week, did we not? So that's another opportunity to remember the freedom we have to be able to vote. The country that we live in, that we have, the privilege that we have to vote, and the remembrance also of those that are willing to step up and run for positions of office to be able to represent godly principles and values. Amen? Amen. Then we also had this week remembrance of, you know, passing of certain people. Uh, we thank God for, for their lives and, you know, for them in our lives. But then with that, we also have to remember birthdays. So while we're you know, grieving in one area, we celebrate life in another area with birthdays. We've had my birthday, Marine Corps birthday, hoorah, Semper Fi, do or die. See, see, where were they at? You know, that was, that was an opportunity for, yeah, get some, but no, everybody's looking at me like, we're an Air Force community. What are you talking about? Uh, all right, finally, one hoorah. But also another birthday, Yolanda's birthday is today. Yeah. Yeah, I threw you under the bus. She's like... Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Also, remembrance of our veterans. Any veterans here today? Yes, thank you for your service. So it's been a great week of remembrance, but there's something else I want you all to remember with me or to celebrate with me. Another thing that we remember our anniversaries, right? So our anniversary, today we're celebrating, but it's actually going to take place Tuesday, Millie and I's anniversary, 34 years of marriage together. <laughs> So to her, I say, you know, she's shown, she's shown so much grace and mercy throughout 34 years and so much love above and beyond the call of duty. While I have medals, I've been awarded medals for wartime, she's the true war hero because she's endured so much throughout 34 years. And I thank God for you for standing by my side for 34 years. I love you. <laughs> All right, so it's been remembrance, right? A lot of stuff, a lot of service that people have done. So... Today we have a guest speaker who himself, he has served in a lot of capacities. I mean, he has served on, in the military, he served in police, he served at schools, he's serving here at the church. He's actually the bridge, as Rusty calls him, the bridge between Parkview and Crossroads. Uh, he's been doing an amazing job here as a ministry assistant, and he's been a great inspiration to my life here. He's helped me out when I was in the school teaching with coaching and other stuff. So I want to present to you all Alan Epstein this morning. <laughs> Alan's going to be bringing the word for you all and just, just stay tuned and hear what God has to share to us today. Amen. God bless. That's awesome. Hello? Okay. Now, that's not how I intended to start at all. So let me, let me start over again. So good morning, Crossroads. Good morning. All right, good morning. That couldn't have gone any worse. 
So anyway, uh, I do want to thank uh, Pastor Marcel. Uh, like I said, he has poured so much into me, and, and I wouldn't be here today, honestly, uh, speaking to you if it weren't for him and him leading me, you know, basically just pouring into me. So I'm grateful for that. I'm thankful for all that he and Millie have done, uh, pouring their heart and time and blood, sweat, and tears, really, right, brother, into this church and to get us to where we are today just through his leadership and their leadership. So thank you. Thank you both for that. And uh, so as Pastor said, I'm Alan Epstein. I am blessed enough to be on the leadership team here with uh, Crossroads, and I kind of, you know, I also work over at, at Parkview. So I've been able and blessed to work with both Pastor Marcel and Pastor Rusty. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. And if I didn't say it, I do want to uh, thank all those who are joining online uh, and reaching us and us reaching out to them in that way. So thank you for that. And starting out today, I, you know, Pastor Marcel mentioned uh, Veterans Day. So I wanted to talk about Veterans Day, and I wanted to, you know, honor our veterans today. And speaking of veterans, you know, there, there are so many different uh, branches of service and, and different ways to serve. And when I think about our veterans, I, I, I'd like to honor you all because of all that you've committed uh, coming before me, even way before I've served, and those who are going to continue to serve even after, um, you know, whether it's in the future or in the past, veterans give of themselves selflessly, and we are grateful for your sacrifice and your service. And I know, as Pastor Marcel mentioned, that if you're a veteran, you know that you, there's no way you could have served in any capacity without your family, right? There's no way that, as he said, the rock that actually stands behind the service member, there's no way that I could have done what I did uh, without my wife, uh, Melanie, I love you, and my children, uh, Emily and Ethan, and my family and my parents. So I'm thankful, for, I'm thankful for the families, okay, for their support. And I'd like to start today's message with a prayer. So if you could all stand with me, uh, and we just reach out to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly God, we come to you today with open hearts, and we pray that your presence and your spirit are with us today. For we honor our military veterans, Lord, and we are grateful for their service and commitment and we know without them and their sacrifice, we would not enjoy the freedom, liberty, and way of life that we are privileged to have in this country. We also pray for those who could not join us here today, those who are sick, those who are healing. We pray that you would place your hand upon them to take that away, Lord. And to all those who bring burdens, stress, strife, and affliction into this house today, we lay it all at your feet, God. We just pray for your peace and comfort over them and all of us as we receive your word today, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Be seated. Thank you. So, you know, when uh, Pastor Marcel asked me to speak and I tried to tell him no several times and make excuses, um, but, you know, he's, he's, he's very persistent. And, you know, he gives you that look. You're like, you know, will, you, will you preach? You know, you just can't say no. I can't say no to the guy. So... Um, as we honor our veterans today, I'm reminded of all the servicemen and women that I've served with uh, over my time in the Air Force. And it basically, what I, when I think back on that time, I know it was a time where I was standing on the shoulders of others. You know, it's nothing that I did. It's stuff, stuff that came before me and those who served alongside me. So I was just grateful for that. And what I learned during that time, maybe one of the most important things that I kind of gleaned from that was that... When you serve with folks like that, you actually get to see a true heart for service, right? A true heart for service, which is kind of the, the heart of this message. You like how I did that? Tie that in. It's the heart of this message. So a true heart to serve is basically what I want to talk about today, maybe not in the way that you think. And as I thought more on that and thought about, well, heart to serve, service to serve, what does it really mean? It made me think about five simple words that are often said to our veterans, uh, five simple words about a, a really uncommon trait. And maybe, maybe you've uttered these words when you've seen someone in uniform, or maybe uh, you've heard these words spoken to you when you've been in uniform. And I'm gonna, we're going to play along here. Does anybody know what phrase I'm talking about? Thank you for your service. All right, Christ, I was worried. I don't know if anyone's going to say that. So that's awesome. That's right. Thank you for your service. Five simple words. You know, whether you've served in the military or you haven't served in the military, or maybe you've served in some other capacity, you understand what it means to be a part of something larger than yourself, right? A part of something that makes you look outward and not inward. These veterans 
they put the needs of others before themselves. They make sacrifices on a daily basis. A lot of them, some of them, have lost their lives doing this. They've lost their lives in a foreign land where they don't even speak the language, where they're not wanted, and they've given up, they made the, act, act, you know, the actual sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice um, for others. So I, I thought about that, and I really kind of, that's something that I internalized. Why would they do that? What would draw someone into a, a career like that, right? What, what causes someone to pursue a calling of that nature? Whether it was for their state or their country, they recognize something, right? A need. They recognize a need where their talents and abilities and perhaps skills, even those that may, may not have even been recognized, maybe they were untapped talent and skills, they just signed up and thought, I can do some good here, although I have no idea what that good is. That's kind of how I was. So, but it's something that was brought forth during their time in the service. And perhaps on an even deeper level, what every veteran knows the day they graduate, when you get, right, Marcel, when you get done with basic training or boot camp or um, country club, as the Air Force calls it, you, you, you get done. Uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. Come on. The Air Force is important now. now everybody has to get muddy. Um, we, we would, we would you, you go out there and you look at yourself in your dress blues and you say, man, I look good, right? Like, I am, I am, I am different. I went through the crucible, and now look at me. I am a, I'm a different person. So you, you see yourself as something different, and those uh, that, that are around you that notice this change, they're affected by it because they also see you as different. And that's the realization. You're something, part of something larger than yourself. It's a change in how you view yourself and how others also view you. But that service comes in many forms. It's not just the military. I know I've been talking about the military and we honor our veterans, but service isn't relegated to nation and state and country alone, is it? Come on now. You know that, right? What about spiritual service, right? What about the church? What about, what about God's church? What about his house? What about the kingdom? You know, when I was in the military, I didn't give that a whole lot of thought. And I don't know about Marcel, but we've talked about this. I didn't give that a whole lot of credence. I thought about the military, and I like looking cool in my uniform. At least I hope I did. But, but what about that spiritual service? You know, last week and, and throughout this series, Pastor Mar Marcel has talked about something called the Great Commission. And if you don't know what that is, the, it, that's just simply where Jesus spoke out in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. He, he was talking to his disciples, and he said this. He said this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded to you. And then he said this, and surely, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Right? So that's, that's the Great Commission. We, we, whether you've heard about it or you haven't, that's the commandment. That's not a request. You know, that was a commandment. That was an order. And, the, and Jesus didn't give a whole lot of orders. That was him basically saying, you've got to do this. You have to do this for, for God. You have to do this for me. And the Bible goes on to stress this, this important concept of service in its place and in our faith. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as what? A ransom for many. That's what it says in Mark. A ransom for many. So in fact, you know, I think this was God's plan for us all along. This is kind of what we're internally built to do, is to serve. Why? Because it changes us and it changes others. It's something, that, it's something within us that's awakened through our spirit because we're made in God's image. Are we not? Am, am I right? I mean, we're made in God's image. I mean, in a world, in a world where everything, it seems like everything from social media posts to digital media, everything is surrounded about what is good for us. What can I do for me? What do I look good wearing? What do I look cool driving? Is this a good selfie? Was this a good vacation? Is my vacation as good as yours? Is your truck bigger than, okay, you get the point, right? It goes on and on and on, and all these things, all these things are of what? Are they of God? Are they of his spirit, of his will? No, they're worldly things. We're not meant to stay here, are we? We're just here. This is a temporary, this is a temporary stay for us. This is a TDY. We've got our, our permanent duty station is not here, is it, folks? No, no. Worldly wants, needs, and desires. So imagine if our veterans had thought that way. Imagine if they said, D-Day, I don't really think so. Vietnam, that's not for me. 
the Middle East, ah, they can have it, it's a sand trap. Where would we be right now? Where, where, what would our lives look like, right? So, no, it's clear, it's clear that as Christ followers and Christians, his plan was for us to use whatever gifts that we had to serve others. And that's something that you see, not just in the church, but in the military. Servant leadership, right? Serving others changes you and it changes lives. They, it says this in 1 Peter, each of you should use whatever gift you have received from God to serve others as faithful, what, stewards, stewards, because that, those gifts and talents aren't yours. They're yours to share, right? They're yours to give of God's grace in its various forms. And here's the point. Service changes people. Whether, whether you believe that or not, you truly internalize being a part of something larger than yourself, and it reshapes, and it redefines who we are. It changes us, right? And I don't want you to think for a minute that I'm up here preaching to you like, oh, I'm going to tell you all these things because, guys, you know, I'm perfect. I've done all this stuff. I mean, you guys, you really need to take a, a page out of my book because I've been doing all this service, and it's just great. No. I wish, I wish that were the case. I really do. I really wish I could stand up here and tell you I've been a choir guy all my life. I've been serving. It's not, that's not even true. It's not even close. Uh, this is definitely one of those sermons that Pastor Marcellus talked about where I am. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I feel like I'm sitting in the car on the way to work saying, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you, you screwed up again. How could you do that? How could you make her mad again? No. So I feel like... <laughs> I'm telling you about ways and times I've fallen short. I've fallen short of the glory of God. I've fallen short of that call to service. And I'm telling you this because I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you don't go down that path. I'm hoping that I can share this with you and that that will make a difference because that's also, in that small way, service. So when I started going to church, uh, well, I guess it's been almost 15 years now, but when I first started going to church at that time, I basically treated church like one of my favorite places back then to eat, especially when I was on the police department, because you get it for free. I mean, not for free. I, whoa, I wasn't supposed to say that. That was actually against the rules. We got it, like, at a discount. Um, and that was the Golden Corral. I mean, can anybody, uh, you know, sympathize with me about the Golden Corral, empathize with me? It's true. Have you been there? Right? Who's been there? You all lie. Okay, all right. You gotta, you gotta lie right here in church. All right. They don't want to admit. Yeah, you know you like those endless potatoes. So, Golden Corral. I treated the church like the Golden Corral. Here's what I would do. I would belly up. I would drive my car up, get my family. I'd belly up to the pulpit, right? I'd get me a big helping of praise and worship first thing from, our, from, from the praise team. I'd fill myself up with that. Oh, and then I'd, you know, I'd say, I hope the pastor brings the word for me today. He better be good. I'm hungry. <laughs> and, and, and I'd get a nice helping of that praise and worship. And then i follow that up with the word. And then maybe I'd say to myself, I hope, too, that he's got something set up for the week, so I'm going to need that. I'm going to need my devotional to finish that off. So that's, that's how I treated the church. I mean, can you, can you believe that? I was a cordial Christian, Dan, cordial. Marcellus preached about this. I kept the church at an arm's length. You know, that, that's nice. I wanted to look the part. I wanted everyone to say, okay, he's got a great family. He's got it all together. He goes to church. But, you know, the point is that that just wasn't true. And, you know, in some ways, when I would show up to church and sit there, I, I, was, I meant no offense to anyone. It just never occurred to me that, you know, there was something that maybe I could do, that maybe there was a role or a part that I could play in that. Just never thought about it. And if I did, you know what I did? You know what I did? I suppressed that urge. I said, oh, no, no, no. No, no, I did what I do best. I made excuses, right? I started saying to myself, no, that, I, no I can't really do that. I'm going to get real with you now. I'm getting real. I'm too busy. My job, my job, my cop, my job is service enough. I'm, I'm in the military. I, got, I don't have time for this. My kids, my kids got, you know, sports and, and, and yeah, school functions. I got to buy a hair product for his hair. I mean, I had, this is, this is, this is heavy duty stuff here, right? Ethan, like, I, I can't, I don't have time. I like my downtime. I'm working, oh, and then I'm working on my memoirs. And so, okay, that last part. I'm really not working on memoirs, but you get the point. I'll think of any reason why I couldn't step up and serve. And, I, and that's being a cordial Christian, and, and it's not good, folks. It's not, not that it's not good because, you know, it, it's an image thing. It's not good internally for who we are. So often when I talk to fellow Christians or, or folks uh, about church or we're sharing or, or there's time for fellowship, people say, I just feel lost. 
You know, I just feel like I'm not connected. Maybe, I w maybe you were connected at one time, and then y you don't feel that connection anymore. Or maybe you've never felt connected to God, and you're just wondering why. I mean, I read my Bible, or at least I try. I, I go to church. Here's why. You know, when I, when I listen to a sermon or when I go to church, what I, like to, what I like to hear myself personally is, okay, talk to me about the Word. Tell me what the biblical foundation is. Then tell me how it applies to me and what I can do with it. How do I actually implement that in my life? I don't know about you, but that's what I like. So that's what I'm trying to do here. That's, this, is, this is how that actually applies to your life. Because if we take time to look around, we realize that there are, there are so many ways we can step up and serve, right? And if you do, if you do that, I promise you this, it will change you. It will change you. Am I right? I mean, if anyone has ever served, I don't care if you've greeted, if you've been, what you've done for a church, it, it changes who you are. And the amazing part is when we serve together as the body, as the hands and feet of Christ, when we serve together, we bring all our different skills and capabilities together in a strategic and intentional way. Now it sounds like a military plan, but I'm telling you, when, it, when we do that, it's everything that you see on a Sunday here, which is an incredible thing. It's an incredible thing, all right? That's not cliche. That's speaking power to truth, all right? That's speaking the power. The alternative, the alternative is to continue to be cordial. Sit back like I did and watch as others do the work of many. That's not how a church thrives. That's not how a church survives. Is, it, is, that, is that how... Is that how, do you think we keep the doors open if only a few do the work of many? There's no way. It's not possible. I'm here to tell you. So, maybe, I don't know what your gift is. I don't know. I didn't know what mine were, to be honest with you. Because this doesn't involve shooting at a target, and it just do doesn't involve chasing people. It doesn't involve, you know, enforcing the law. And it, it, it certainly doesn't involve, you know, like disciplinary stuff like I did in the military. So, I didn't know what my, my skill set, so to speak, spiritually was either. Maybe you're excellent with child care. I don't know. Maybe you could help step up in a role where we need to, to nurture and grow and, and, and mentor young children, right, for, for service later and for the church. Maybe you're, you're, you teach Bible studies. Maybe you're a musician and you can be part of this great praise team. I'd love, I imagine myself standing up here with them, but I, don't, I could never actually do that because then, you know, no one would come. They have, oh, Dan's like, come on, man, I need you to come out. And, he, and then I broke something. He's like, no, nah, man. And you know what? No, Alan, just you, the sound. So it, there's so many different ways, but, you know, group leaders, security team, craftsmen, there's things that need to be fixed. You probably didn't think when you came here this was going to be a recruiting uh, video for, for Parkview, I mean, excuse me, for Parkview and Crossroads or just Crossroads, but it's not. It's not, okay? Because... What I'm saying to you is no matter where you decide to end up in your path, whether you're just here today checking our church out, checking out Crossroads, if you're online just shopping around, you know, doing that church shopping thing, it doesn't matter where you end up, serve. Wherever you end up, serve, all right? And here's why, folks. This is the real meat and potatoes, steak and, and um, endless potatoes, as I talked about. You like how I did that with the Golden Corral? This is a, that's an analogy. Never mind. Forget it. So, but seriously, can you play along with me for one second? Just one second, because you guys have so, been so awesome. I need some participation. Repeat after me. We're going to try this now. When I serve. When I serve. Oh, it's sad. Come on now, people. I mean, you try to get me fired. When I serve. When I serve. I discover. I discover. I change. I change. And I experience. And I experience. Very good. That was nice. So what do I mean by that? What is this application I've been talking about? I discover. I discover what? God's purpose in my life. And I mean the true purpose now. I mean the true purpose. I, I thought when I joined you know, the police force and I joined the military, that was my, my purpose. I was wrong. I'm here to tell you I was wrong. As much as I loved my job at that time, that wasn't his true purpose for me. And I'm not sure what you do for a living, but if you're like a lot of us, you don't believe that whatever you're doing is the true purpose for your life, I bet could be wrong. And if you do, praise God, hallelujah, you're part of the 1%. If you're doing what you love and it is actually your calling in life, you got it made. So I can't touch that. I want to mess with that. But if you're like a lot of folks, if you're like a lot of us, you work to support your family and you work to support yourself. Unfortunately, some people work to support Budweiser, but that's not the point. The point is, shame the devil. What is, the point is, 
what you really envision as God's calling for you isn't what you're doing. And perhaps you're, you're lacking in that regard, and, and, it, and it causes you to, it leads you astray, really, because it, it brings us down, doesn't it? The worldly affliction gets to us at that point. But in spiritual service, that's something where you can really feel your calling. And I, I am being completely serious with you. If that weren't the case, I wouldn't be standing up here today. I promise you that. I'd be sitting out there with you because this is not easy. And I told Marcel, I give uh, mad respect and props and credit to pastors who do this every Sunday. And, they, and I, I really feel like... I'm, I'm, as I told him last night, I was like, you know, I hate to, I don't know if I can do this, man. And he sends me this text in the middle of the night. It's like, I know it was to help me, but it didn't help, you know? He sends you that text late at night like, uh, I'm praying for you. I hope it all goes well. I pray that God's uh, got you covered, all right? Now, good luck. Now, don't be late. And so I was like, ah, how does he do it, right? So I, I realize it now, though, because being up here, it's energizing and and. And the spirit, I, I just pray that's the spirit and not anxiety flowing through me right now. <laughs> God, God's, God's with me in this. Um, and then, so, you, so we talked about discovering, discovering your true purpose, and then you change. You change through your service to others what you bring to the table. That thing that I talked about that comes forth from within you, those talents and abilities that kind of awaken, that's the change. You change people and you change yourself. You bring out the best that God has instilled in you, your true gifts and talents. And finally, last, and maybe most importantly, I said, you experience, excuse me, you experience, <laughs> you experience a true relationship with God. Spiritual service, you place others before yourself. True kingdom building, now you could do a whole other sermon on kingdom building. It draws you closer to God in ways you can't understand, and that's through service. Through service, amen? So don't sit on the sidelines like I did, please. Um, don't be a cordial Christian. Get off the sidelines. Believe me, you, will, you won't regret it. And whether you serve here, just, just serve. Um, let me close by just saying this. Uh, God doesn't need your service. All right? I mean, let's, let's be honest. The creator of all, from the beginning of time to now, right, does not need your service. You do. I do. All right? <laughs> You need the joy and fulfillment and sense of purpose that comes with serving others. You look outward and not inward. You refine who you are. You become a part of something far larger and greater than yourself. And so as, as I close out today, I just I feel led to just pray. And this amazing, this, our amazing praise team's coming back up here again. Because they're bringing, they, they brought the spirit today, folks. I'm serious, man. They, they really brought it. So I just want to, can we stand now and just give the glory to God? Father, we come to you today with open hearts. I pray that your word and your spirit will resonate with all of us. Because it says, where two or more are gathered in your name, God, there you will also be. And I feel you in here today, Lord. I know you're here, God. I feel your presence. I pray over all those in this church, all those joining us online. I pray for the afflictions that surround us, that you will take those afflictions and we lay that all at your feet. That you take the burdens, you'll take the sickness, and that you will set us on a straight path, Lord, as we start our week, Lord. We give it all to you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Alan, Alan, real quick before we sing the song, come on, put your hands together for the word that came forward. I, th I thank God for him. I thank God for his message, a heart to serve. He, he said before that, you know, when he was in military and law enforcement, hey, if it didn't involve shooting at a target, if it didn't involve chasing people down, if it didn't involve enforcing laws, but look at what he was doing. God has made you aim at a target, which is him. He's made a purpose in your life to seek after him, aim, and you're set. Chase after people, the, the word, what you're doing at work right now, and all that you're doing, you're getting people to come 
to the knowledge and to the grace of God and to come before him. So you're chasing after people. Then the law enforcement, we're here to provide the word of God. We're here to get people to know the word, walk by the word accordingly, apply it to their lives, like you said. So God has already been changing you. He's given you this new experience, and I thank God for where he's taken you, your entire family, your daughter, who's over at UVA. I just thank God for what he's been pouring, the Holy Spirit pouring into your life. So it's your service as well comes from your heart. So I thank God for your message today.